My name is Gordon Goodwin. I'm sitting here with the great trumpet player Wayne Bergeron, and we're here to thank you for choosing to play Attack of the Killer Tomatoes <laughs> on your smart music system. We're going to talk a little bit about the process that we went through with the big fat band in order to learn how to play this really difficult chart. This thing actually came out harder than I thought it was going to be when, when I wrote it. Uh, the whole beginning of this, from, from the first bar to... Um, first bar to bar 40 is kind of a fake out because the melody right. to this song is pretty conventional everyone you know that's seen that terrible movie <laughs> knows <laughs> what da, do you da, mean? Da, 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 da. so I, I decided to write an introduction with little fragments of that melody but never really playing it you know completely matter of fact I remember uh, somebody at, at my record company was like you know I don't hear the melody for like a minute and a half. You know, go into get rid of that whole first 40 bars. I think the 40 first 40 bars are the coolest part of the yeah, chart. You know, great. but it's very difficult, and and I think that you're going to spend most of your time playing this first 40 bars, and then when it recurs at the end. Right. I mean, I, I think we uh, once again there's a lot of little detail work, you know, in this music. Yeah, once you hit the double time on this, it's pretty straight ahead what you have to do. Yeah. But this little slower section at the top, there's a lot of intervals to make and a lot of. But up, but out, up, but out. Those are the most difficult things in the chart for me to play as well. Uh huh. And there's like little cluster voicings, you know, mm -hmm. where the where the you know you're kind of in in uh, you know, close voice chords, mm -hmm. which are harder to play in tune. Right. Um, and it seems to me that there's there's a couple of places where new guys subs in the band they, they fall in the hole. Oh yeah. Right? <laughs> if you think you're gonna just read this down, it's like one of those things you have to be paying attention to. You have to yeah, have to. And, and I, I have to say, even that we've been playing the chart for several years, and sometimes we still come in wrong. You know. Well, some so, of the guys do. Some of the guys do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have plenty of times. I, I, and, I don't. But. <laughs> okay. Is okay. that how it is? Uh, now, when we get to um, the the uh, trombone, the bass trombone solo at bar forty, you know, that tends to want to backslide. Right. That tends to want to slow down. So it's up to the drummer and the and the trombone player to make sure you are if your tempo is in sync and not dragging. Because I, I don't like this chart if it gets too slow, but I don't like it if it gets too fast either. It's one of those things where the, where if, the, if it's too fast it sounds a little frantic and the licks not that they lay perfectly anyway, but yeah. they really don't lay but it the, too fast. But it, but it lays pretty good. The fast section of this chart, I've got to say, from the trumpet standpoint, this chart lays lays pretty well. Yeah. You know, it, it's got some high notes in it and stuff, but the chart itself lays pretty well. Now, what's the high note of this chart? Oh, uh, there's a double A concert. B, ba, 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 ba. That one there? Well, that one there, and there's also a ba, 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 ba. Pardon my singing, oh, yeah. obviously. I don't make my living singing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why not. Yeah. But you know, that, of course, now that lick, at least it works up, you know, yeah, tradically to the That's bar 169, by the way. I don't way. think I've ever heard you miss it. Um, yeah, I've never missed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that just walks up the triad, so it's okay. It yeah, walks yeah. up a B triad, so you no. know where you're going. Okay, you know? what about the end? Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. That one's a little tougher to get to, yeah. you know. <laughs> that's one where I was going, what are you thinking, pal? Come on. I know, I know. I know. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, now for those of you out there who don't have the high, the double B, yeah. you know, I think it's okay if you just go ahead and play it down an yeah. octave because, well, the sec or you might want to switch parts of the second trumpet. He goes, da 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 da. You know, yeah. that that would work good too. It all works, yeah. I mean, some of the stuff you know is optional. My thing with all these charts, by the way, you know, if you're playing it and if your high school band or your college band has a different strength or you want to change it up I mean you need to make it work for you I'm totally cool with that yeah. you know so if it's a matter of changing the register or, or whatever you need to do if you need to drop a note out once in a while I mean you know go for it yeah I don't think there's anything wrong in this chart there's there's places uh, on units and lines and things because I have something high coming up I might let the rest of this band or the trumpet section take some of those units and lines so I can uh, make sure I make the high note I don't always do that but I you know it's kind of at my discretion well you know I Actually, I've, uh, over the years, see, having players like Wayne and the guys in the band have uh, covered up a multitude of sins for me. Because whatever I write, they kind of got to play it, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, what I tended to do with the first trumpet parts is kind of write everything, and I know Wayne will know what the, the stuff he has to cover. Right. He knows if there's four bars of a unison with the other three trumpets, he can take a minute and set for the end of it when it goes into harmony. Right. And that works. Yeah, I do that a lot in, in, in most of the music I find the places. So, And my second trumpet player and I do the same thing with Dan Finero. 
we split things up to make it comfortable so we can get through the job without getting beat up. We play a lot of hard music mm-hmm. in one setting, so yeah. it kind of becomes a team effort at that point. And there's no shame in that whatsoever. Do you, do you ever foresee a time in your career that you might actually have the ability to play a whole chart from the beginning <laughs> to the end? I don't think so. I think I'm just too weak to actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's the case. If you want to learn more about what's going on in Wayne Bergeron's career, Go to WayneBergeron.com. Yeah, and check check Wayne out. He's a bad boy for sure. Thanks for joining us today, guys, and and have fun playing tactics. Killer Tomatoes. Thanks a lot.